This is definitely a hard question, um, but it is one where if we kind of just follow the instructions, we will eventually get where we need to go. There are some things we need to remember for geometry, but most of this hard geometry question, like all other ge hard geometry questions, is really just simple geometry combined into one complicated question, right? So we'll get to that when we get to that, but let's just start with the, the simple first sentence here. A circle has center G and points M and N lie on the circle. So let's draw circle G and here it is with the center and then M and N, yeah, we can just put them here. Here's M, here's N, whatever, okay. Uh, line segments MH and NH are tangent to the circle at points M and N. Now this is the key piece, right, because we need to know that, that that word tangent is giving us a lot of important information. A, a, it's not about trigonometry. A tangent line with a circle is going to just kind of graze the circle. It's going to hit it once. So I can kind of just really just, it, it just passes right by and it does it right at M. It's not going through the circle. It's not a chord. It's not a diameter. It's just kind of grazing it. And I know my circle isn't great, but we could do the same thing with N. Ugh, I'm going to cheat a little and bend the line. But there it is. That, those are tangent lines and they're going to intersect somewhere at H. Now the key here, and, and we kind of get this hint right away. So if the radius of the circle is 168 millimeters, okay. So you should be drawing the radius, right? So I'll use a different color here. But when you draw the radius, don't just randomly draw it, right? Connect the dots that they told you to connect, right? Make a radius that actually uses the stuff that they gave you in the question. And when you do, we see that we're starting to make a shape that's more familiar, right? This looks like a quadrilateral, right? It's a four-sided figure. We know stuff about that. But the other important thing to know is that when we draw these radiuses and they get to the tangent line, they're going to form right angles with those tangent lines. So that's really, really important because without it, we really can't solve the problem. You might be able to kind of like look at it and make an assumption, but this is not something we need to assume. It is a law of tangent lines that they form right angles with the radius that they intersect. So let's continue, right? So that's 168. I can put that on the picture too. Right, so let's put it there, right? Don't hold it in your head, put it in the picture, see it. Um, and the perimeter of the quadrilateral GMHN, which we just drew, is 3,856 millimeters. What is the distance in millimeters between points G and H? Well, again, put stuff on the picture, right? The, the, they want the distance between G and H, so let's just connect G and H. And what do we do when we do that? We make triangles, right? So this is, this is a, a good situation because as I said, most hard geometry questions are really basic geometry questions kind of put together, right? So we have some basic shapes here. We have a circle. We have a quadrilateral. It's not quite a rectangle, but it's, it's a quadrilateral, okay? But more importantly, we have triangles, and, and there are triangles everywhere in hard geometry questions. You gotta find them, right? But this time, if you just follow the instructions, they're there for you. They appear, and they are right triangles, and that's gonna be really useful as well. But first, we've got to figure out more about these triangles, right? So we need to find that, that kind of hypotenuse of those triangles, but we can't do that if we only have one side. We would need to know an angle. So it could be a 30, 60, 90. It could be a 45, 45, 90, but I don't know that yet. Um, or it could be that we need to find the other side, in which case we could just use Pythagorean theorem. So this is where the reference chart comes in, right? We know that there's only so many things that could be on the test, and you can always go to the reference chart to inspire you. And if you see these triangles, there's only so many things that could come up. But let's use uh, another fact here that we haven't really talked about, the fact that the perimeter is 3,856 millimeters, right? So that's the perimeter of the whole shape. And look, we've got two of the sides already accounted for, 168 and 168. So let's just do some subtraction here, right? So 3, 8, 5, 6, we can subtract out those two sides and we should be left with whatever's left, right? So I'll do the subtraction in my regular calculator. So 3, 8, 5, 6, minus 168, minus 168 is 3, 5, 2, 0. Now to be clear, that is both M, H, and uh, NH added together, right? So we, we don't know what they are. Here's a point where you just kind of have to make an assumption. Like, there's probably some proof of it, but I don't really care. But I'm going to assume that those are the same, right? That MH and NH are the same. It probably has something to do with the way that this triangle is formed. There's probably something with the angles and, and congruent triangles, side, angle, side, whatever. I don't care. At this point, I'm just like, well, I'm, I'm kind of stuck if they're not equal. They look equal in my picture, so let's just go with it. Right, so that means if I divide this by two, I will get the value of each of these, right? So let's divide by two. And that gives me that MH is 17 
60 and, and so is NH. I'll put them both, right? So let's put that here, 17, 60, and ooh, 17, 60, squeezing it in. But now I don't really care anymore. Now I am just interested in, let's just focus on the fact that one right triangle borders the two sides that I have plus the side that I want, that blue, right? So I'm gonna pull this out. Let's just focus on that right triangle that I highlighted, right? So if you draw it really neat, right? This would be N, this is H, this is G. We have sides of 168 and 1760. So not drawn to scale, but who cares, right? This is now just basic Pythagorean theorem. We're looking for the C, the hypotenuse of this right triangle. So let's just do it, right? So 168 squared plus 1760 squared is equal to C squared. So here I might go to Desmos. Uh, it's, you know, a little easier maybe. So uh, we've got 168 squared plus 1760 squared. So it's a really big number, right? So <laughs> luckily that's not an answer because sometimes people forget to take the square root of that. Let's see if I can do it. I'm curious if it's gonna let me. I would really love to uh, be able to just type the square root here. Oh, darn it, I thought it was gonna work. Okay, that's fine. Let's just copy, copy and paste under the square root. Oh, come on. Oh, see, this is why the keyboard's better. There we go. 1768, choice D, that's the answer. Right, so you saw, I got kind of bothered here because, uh, yeah, like, if I do go to Desmos, I, I have to deal with the, the typing. I should have just typed the square root to begin with, but there you go. So you could also do it piece by piece, but that's it, right? So you're going to get the square root of both of these things, and that gives you C of 1768, and that's your final answer. So this is a hard question, but what did it really entail? Well, we certainly had to follow a lot of instructions, right? That that part is hard, um, but you know, you got to trust the process. You know how to draw a circle. Uh, you need to know what a tangent line is, um, but radiuses are going to come up whenever we have circles, right? That's an important concept. Whenever it's a hard question with geometry, odds are good you're going to use right triangles in some way. So a lot of this is very familiar. Even if you've never seen a question exactly like this before, if you've done any hard geometry questions, a lot of the moves that we made, drawing radiuses, making right triangles, those are common moves. So you got to be prepared for that. But I do think this is one that, you know, especially if you only got like two minutes on the clock, you might want to skip uh, and try your luck at number 22. It's not necessarily easier, but it does have a, a more familiar kind of topic. And so you might have better luck there, but that's, you know, person dependent, right? So you got to make your choice. And at the very least, you know, you can probably guess from one of these three answers. You probably know it's not 168, right? You really think the radius is just also the distance? If you just drew a simple picture, you'd kind of see that GH is longer, so at least you'd eliminate that. And then from there, you know, yeah, one in three shot ain't bad for the hardest question on the test, so take the guess if you have to, but I think that you can practice hard geometry so that the moves here are not as unfamiliar as they may seem at first.